Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here once again to review Firestarter 2022. And as I was saying, this is going to be another bad review. And it's funny because I I had to, uh, you know, move spaces once again, you know, constant interruptions around here, you know, pretty much make it impossible to film a review without having to shoot it again because of an interruption or multiple, unfortunately. Uh, that, you know, that's why people have studio spaces, I guess, uh, because of fucking retards and it was fun it was funny though because just as the uh interruption happened i was saying this isn't going to be another bad review and it's like oh yeah it pretty much is a bad review because uh you know bad reviews i would say one of the biggest problems is interruptions you know like uh and when you have a group review where people are off topic stuff like that that always really pisses me off so uh, you can imagine what it's like when I go through it when I'm making the reviews you know I'm very particular and I don't uh I don't accept that kind of uh quality uh, that kind of low quality and it's unfortunate because the people who made this film they do accept this kind of quality the people who made this film I don't know, uh, this, this movie sucked, it was really bad, it was really, really bad, <sighs> like, I, I just, I don't know anymore, like, what am I supposed to say, like, it just, it, it's another Blumhouse movie, so, of course, you knew already the movie was gonna be trash, uh, that's number one, number two, it's a 2022 movie, and so that means you know that there's going to be some woke agenda in it. It's going to be a woke movie. And you're not going to be able to enjoy it and just turn your brain off. Because you have to constantly be reminded by all these elites that you're, you know, you know, men bad, women good. You know, all that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, it's just unfortunate. You know, that's why I do these old movie months. That's why I just got through doing a Betty Davis month. That's why I've been going through the X-Files with Safi, which we will be doing a season 8 review pretty soon. It's because I just can't stand watching these new movies that are just they're horrible. Like, this is just, like, what were they thinking with this movie? Like, it, it, I have never seen the original Firestarter. I have never read the book. But, uh, uh, this this was bad. Like, th this was something that you... You know what this reminded me of? You know those videos on YouTube where they're, they're like special effects tutorial videos? And, and then at the end, they'll have like a little shitty short film that they shot in like a day or something to showcase the effects that they showed you how to do in the video that's what this reminded me of completely this <laughs> all it was was a special effects tutorial movie like a student film youtuber amateur special effects movie and I mean, I've seen, I mean, shout out to Queen of Hearts and all those other types of fan films. Uh, in fact, one of my biggest influences as a kid, uh, someone made this Michael Myers versus Jason versus Leatherface fan film. And it was so inspiring and so awesome that I still remember it to this day, even though I can't find it. Like, I could probably go through the entire plot to, that's how good it was and it didn't have any glimmer or shine or or any particularly uh impressive filmmaking elements like this movie's just trying so hard to be technically good it's trying so hard to be like a 
quote unquote professional modern film that it really doesn't make an actual film. Like, <laughs> filmmaking isn't really about technical stuff at all. I mean, that's why silent movies were made because back back in the day they didn't know how they didn't have sound number one uh, but the those silent films are they're still around you know people still like those why because they're good and because uh, the filmmaking itself trumps technical errors technical issues and so i would say that this this film it was just a huge waste of time it was a huge waste of money it was a huge waste of talent. It was a waste of everything. I mean, it was even a waste for me to watch it. It was horrible watching it, too. Like, oh, I, I wanted to fall asleep. I was fighting falling asleep watching this movie. I was, I was like, dozing off and, and like, staring into space and, and you know, just w wishing I could turn on the video to 1.5 speed. The 2.5 speed because this was so boring and slow. I mean, it's another one of those, you know, hour and 30 minute movies where, oh, oh, yay, it's an hour and 30 minutes, but it sucks. You know, those movies where, you know, they have to be the certain length because they're fitting the certain formula. And honestly, this movie felt like it was 10 hours to me. Like, I had a better time watching Sacked Snyder's Justice League last year, for instance. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was falling asleep. It was horrible. I just wanted it to end. And I was like, oh, I have so much of this movie left. And so, you know what I did? I did the same thing I did with Doctor Strange 2. I, I made popcorn and I ate the popcorn and I got I and it and it helped me stay awake just enough to finish this crap and and also uh I was doing some uh yard work and a blister popped on my foot and so uh sort of some of the pain and discomfort from that helped me stay awake too uh, to finish watching this shitty movie, or else I would have fallen asleep. I was ready to go to sleep, actually. Like, I was fully, fully accepting the reality that I would just go to sleep and then say in the review, uh, this movie sucked, I fell asleep, whatevs. But no, I stayed awake, I stuck it out, and it, it was not worth it whatsoever. Uh, for starters... The movie is all about Alma from American Horror Story season 10 and she <laughs> let's just say she does she does not give a performance as good as she gives an American Horror Story. But then again in American Horror Story she wasn't really told to do that much except for in the first episode or so. Uh whereas in this she's like told to do a lot more She's expected to sort of have a character arc of some kind and sort of uh, learn some lessons and react to things. Whereas in American Horror Story, she just kind of glares and kills people. Spoiler alert. Uh, so I really liked her in American Horror Story a lot more. Uh, that being said, she is a pretty good actress for her age. And so I would say that uh, I can't wait to see what else that she does. Uh, Zach Efron, it's really sad because he's good. I like him. I would cast him in a movie. Uh, he had this phase where he he had to prove to everyone that he was not Troy anymore from High School Musical. And he did it. And, and he completely pulled it off in an unexpected, surprising way, uh, whereas, you know, someone like Robert Pattinson, you know, he still hasn't, uh, left Twilight, you know, he's still Twilight Boy, I mean, you saw that in the Batman, he's Twilight Boy, uh, and, and, and Zac Efron, he said, I think yesterday, he'd love to do another high school musical, and honestly, for all the shit that I've given high school musical, 
I much rather watch another High School Musical than watch this movie again. <laughs> Because this movie was so dumb. It was so boring. It was so eventless. You could tell that they changed stuff from the book. And then I looked it up. And I saw, oh no, they did change quite a bit from the book. To the point where it's it's basically the, the cliff notes of the book. It's basically like if a group of kids in a high school class got told to reenact the movie within like five minutes and make like a five minute video of the, of the whole movie <laughs> I mean that's what it was I mean this was really bad and and the the agendas like really I, let's just say well okay it, I don't really care if it's a spoiler or not because it's an agenda I mean it, it, it has no place in the movie regardless there's a scene where Little Alma, I'll just call her that, because I, oh, Charlie, uh, I just remembered her name as I was speaking. That's what happens when I talk, I, I sort of remember as I'm talking, uh, Charlie, little Charlie, she meets a cat, the cat scratches her, and then she accidentally burns the cat, and then she has to kill it, thanks to her dad's guidance, uh, put it out of its misery, and then they give it a funeral. And the mo oh well, okay, that's a spoiler. Uh, I'll t I'll talk more about that in spoilers. I was just gonna say like the the monster and her did something. No, uh, I'll save that for the spoilers. But they're giving a cat a funeral. This cat and Zac Efron really says, uh, "I hope he or she or they is in heaven," and like. Uh, you know, resting in peace, like, really, really, like, you're gonna shove some transgender pronoun BS agenda into the scene, I mean, it is a simple scene, how do you fuck that up, it's a scene with the cat, it's a scene with the cat funeral, you dipshit, there's no such thing as a transgender cat, Maybe if one of these mentally ill SJWs pretends like it's a fucking transgender cat so that they can show it off on TikTok and say I have a transgender cat. That's the only way. There's no such thing as a transgender cat. This was the simplest scene. This movie, yeah, all Stephen King movies, they're full of simple, simple scenes with simple, simple dialogue and simple, simple cardboard characters and you honestly had the easiest scene in the movie this was the easiest scene in the movie you got a cat funeral anyone could act out a cat funeral a 10 year old retard could act out a cat funeral and by retard i mean like one of these shitty backstage.com actors i don't mean like a mentally handicapped person but that's beside the point this it's an easy scene cat funeral uh let's pray for this cat i hope this cat rests in peace bye that's it. That's the scene. But no, you got to go beyond that and make it about pronouns. Fucking stupid. That's such stupid writing. Where did the good writers go? Where did the good writers in Hollywood go? Why are the writers in Hollywood such shitty hacks? Why are the writers in Hollywood incapable of writing good stories? This was an embarrassment of a film. Embarrassment. You had all these events happen. None of them had any meaning or depth. You just have event happen. And then the characters go here. And then an event happens. And then the characters go here. And then the movie ends. Yay! The only thing in this movie worth mentioning is the John Carpenter score. And as I've said before, as long as you get John Carpenter to score every independent horror movie ever made from now on until he's dead, 
they will be elevated slightly. And so it's basically a handicap. So congratulations, Firestarter. You are not a 0 out of 10 because you have the handicap of the John Carpenter score that you have in this film. And it's not even that good of a John Carpenter score. It's like a 3 out of 5, like a low 3 out of 5. Uh, let's be honest, though. Uh, it is probably the worst John Carpenter score I've heard so far. Uh, it, the the Studio Six 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 score was better, uh, but this this movie, uh, I don't care. I don't really don't care. I'm just gonna rate it in terms of food, so I can get the spoilers and then end this and. <sighs> Go watch something enjoyable, hopefully. Like, maybe there will some, be something good that I can find to watch that it's an, it's enjoyable and it's not full of agendas and full of bad acting. I mean, you want to talk about bad acting. This movie not only had bad writing. I mean, you heard that from the cat funeral. You think the cat funeral dialogue is bad? The movie is full of terrible dialogue. Uh, terrible, especially Zac Efron's character. Like, the stuff that he says to his daughter. Some, some of the decisions that he makes with what he tells her to do and not do. And <laughs> I mean, there are so many... It, it, that's the beauty of, like, a Stephen King adaptation is that Stephen King's writing is so bad that even in the most polished, quote-unquote, professional movie from 2022 Hollywood, even the most professionally made movie, is if it's adapted from a Stephen King story, Stephen King's stuff is going to bleed through to the other side. And oh boy, you had uh, you had the typical redneck. You had some uh, you know agendas that you know probably came from the original book. Uh, you had all sorts of uh, horrible lines of dialogue that I don't know if they were written by the shitty writer or Stephen King himself. Hopefully, Stephen King did not write the lines that were in this movie because they're 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 just so bad and embarrassing and. You know, it, it, there's just no other way to describe them. Like, they're, you know, they're bad. You know, when you hear a bad line of dialogue, you know it's a bad line of dialogue. I would give this movie, in terms of food, you know, back when I was in elementary school, there was one day where I was eating nachos, and nacho cheese, nacho chips and cheese, and milk and a cookie, I think. And, you know, that's what they considered like a meal. <laughs> and I was biting one of the chips, and uh, I still have baby teeth, and, like, my tooth broke apart, and it completely, like, just came out all, all over the chips. And so I would say, take take that and then eat eat it anyway and then you pour the milk in your mouth and then you eat the cookie and then you shit that all out and then you put that you you put the amber turd you know you could have amber herd do it for you you put that in plastic wrap and then you flatten it like a fruit roll up and then you eat it like a fruit roll-up. And that's what this movie is. It's just a fucking uh, fruit roll-up of shit. It's a shit-flavored fruit roll-up. Uh, that's what this fucking movie is. This movie... And let's be fair. Let's be fair because it's 2022. That's, what, that's a very popular line with people who like to excuse why movies are so bad why TV shows are so bad. They excuse it in terms of like, oh, it's 2022, so obviously movies can't be like what they were like in the 80s. Uh, like, they're proud of how terrible movies are nowadays. Uh, but the thing is, is that I have seen, so far, I've seen like, I don't know, 
20 something movies and I'm I'm telling you guys 12 uh 22 movies I've seen but 12 out of 22 movies that I've seen including this one they are all F minus movies and what does that tell you about Hollywood what does that tell you about quality they don't have any ma pandemic excuse anymore uh, you know, like they did in 2020 and kind of in 2021, you know. Uh, movies were bad because my pandemic. And, you know, oh, well, now uh, there's no excuse anymore. Uh, and yet you still have piles of shits, completely unnecessary trash dumpster fires like this movie coming out, unfortunately. And we just have to suffer through them, you know. And and let, and I, I didn't pay for this movie, so I don't care. You know, I watched it on uh, Peacock or whatever app that it said it was on. Uh, so I'm glad that I didn't pay for it. <laughs> because I would have been so mad if I had paid for this movie. Like, please, people, do not support this movie. Do not support anything that Blumhouse makes. Uh, they make terrible movies. Uh, I mean, right now they're basically taking every franchise they can buy and ruining them. You know, they ruined Halloween... They ruined Scream. Uh, they ruined this now. Because when I watch the original I, and read the book, I'm always going to be thinking in the back of my head, oh, this is better than that 2022 version. But I'm always going to be thinking about it. And, and that's the problem with this modern day film culture is that they make all this new stuff that ruins the old stuff. Because you know why? Because they want to destroy everything and then build their own shit on top of it. Because then people will be so desperate for anything that they'll just say that, that this SJW shit is good. Because, it, it oh, it's, it's better than the stuff where they ruin the franchises. That's basically what they're doing. They're basically film terrorists. They basically want to destroy every old franchise they can find so that they can build their own terrible stuff on top of it. Uh, so now let's get to spoilers. Let's spoil this shitty fucking Stephen King 2022 movie. Uh, well, the mom dies pretty early on, and the movie, it is very slow, but at the same time, it's rushed. That's the weird part of this movie is that the plot takes forever to happen, but it's a pretty simple plot, and the, the events, they don't really unfold in a natural way. I mean, this is a typical story where you have a kid that needs to be protected from the bad government people, and so she travels across a landscape with an adult, and there's obstacles along the way, and then the adult eventually dies, blah, blah, blah. You know, you've seen this movie a million times before, and one of the problems is that this this girl, she, she never feels like a human. Like, if from the very beginning of the... And I know that sounds terrible to say, but from the very beginning of the movie, she displays no human qualities at all. Like, she's sitting in class... And this guy calls her weird. And, you know, he is being a little mean, I guess. But at least he's acting like a person. And, like, she's she has all this power. And so she can't even really be like a person, I guess, because she doesn't know how to control it. And, and so it, she has this, like, weird thing where it's like, oh, she wants to kill this kid because he called her weird? He called her a name? And then later on, they're playing dodgeball, and she's really happy because she hits this guy with a ball. She's like, yay, I did something, I achieved something. And then this guy hits her, and, and she's like automatically going to kill him. And it's like, what the hell, like it's dodgeball, like, it's just really weird, uh, it, really weird, even for a kid, like, even for a kid, I swear, it's really weird, uh, reactions, and then you have, like, this guy, the, the government lab, I guess, there's this dark, evil, 
It's the same old thing like with the new mu- the new the new mutants where you have this dark government facility and there's only like five people in it and then there's like an evil woman doctor. She's very scary and not <laughs> and uh she, she's she hires this former experiment guy to come after them and he's actually the best character in the movie, I guess, even though he sucks too, pretty much. Because of the writing. I think that he probably did the best job acting-wise. I guess his name was like Rainbird or Freebird or uh, Rain Catcher or something. I don't know. Like, I, I literally, I, see, I, 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 Charlie, you have Charlie and you have Dab Mom. I don't know anything else. Uh, but his, his I, I read about him in the Wikipedia, and I guess in the Wikipedia, he just stays evil. Uh, well, in this movie, it's a little bit different. And, and that's actually the only thing that I kind of, like, was interested in was the fact that it there is a point to, to like, say, like, yeah, he was an experiment, too. And so it was actually a much uh, better choice, in my opinion, to make him maybe turn good at the end. I mean, he turns good, and that was the only part of the movie where I was like, yeah, that that's a pretty good idea, instead of where it says in the book, I guess, he just comes and tries to kill them, and then it's just like, oh, it's sad and dark because it's a part of this big government conspiracy. And that's another thing, is that when it, when it all boils down to it, this movie basically reminded me of a really mediocre, bad X-Files episode, just without any investigators. <laughs> and so that's what I thought of during this whole movie, was like, you know, this could easily be X-Files episode 5, Firestarter. Uh, no, Cat Funeral. Burned. You know, this is basically young Dark Phoenix, and at least Dark Phoenix was actually good. You know, another thing about this movie was the fire effects. They looked very fake, computer-generated for the most part, and I was not really impressed by them. You know, even on the X-Files, there was an episode where a guy makes people go on fire and the fire effects looked better than this. You know, the fire effects were really not that impressive. And when you see a movie called Firestarter, man, I'm expecting her to massacre people. I'm expecting chaos. I'm expecting bullets, as as it says in the Wikipedia, bullets melt, cars explode, buildings burn down. Like, I am expecting destruction, of apocalyptic levels, uh, well, mini destruction, that is, uh, but instead, it's basically this controlled, sort of short film type of destruction, where it's like, you know, you can tell that it's just very contrived, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of goofy moments and things, like, there's this part where there's, like, this redneck farmer, and he says, you're telling me I can't trust everything the TV says? And, you know, that's clearly, like, a dig at, like, uh, all these people who watch, uh, like, TV all the time. And they just trust whatever, you know, type of propaganda they're watching on TV. Which, honestly, it goes for both sides, so I'm fine with that. Uh, it just was a really weird and clunky joke. And there were a lot of weird and clunky, jokey lines of dialogue. You know, there was this part where she steals a, a bicycle and a sandwich from a guy, and a, one of these, like, random bully guys, and, and, you know, really weird stuff like that. And, like, I, I, I couldn't even tell what the sandwich was. Like, I could kind of see, like, maybe a glimmer of peanut butter, like, maybe just a smidgen of peanut butter poking out of the edge, but it was never really confirmed to me, like, I never, I, I didn't understand that, it's the same thing, like, in American Horror Story, when they say, uh, you know, oh, she knows how to make mac and cheese, or, you know, oh, go make your mac and cheese, like, because the, the parents had to leave, you know, they left their daughter 
home alone. And we never even got to find out. That still bothers me. Never even got to find out if she had her mac and cheese. And in this movie, never even get to find out what the sandwich was. Uh, it, it, it's just it's Stuff like that pisses me off too, uh, honestly. But the plot, you have this super soldier guy. He's basically a winter soldier type character. But the problem is, is that he's not. He's got a fully functioning brain. He's not being controlled by this evil lab. And so he comes to the family's house and the the dad and girl are gone. And so he kills the mom. And of course, I was expecting that it was very, very predictable, uh, one note plot like that. And you know, he, he did that, you know, he, he knew what he was doing, you know, he was not, uh, being mind controlled, like Winter Soldier, and so then the dad and the girl run away, then they go to a farm, and then the bad guy catches them up, catches up on, uh, to them at the farm, and the dad surrenders, the girl runs away, and, and and the the bad guy he kills a bunch of police, all these people massacred and stuff, and so they imprison him too, which is funny. They imprison the own guy that they hire, uh, the stupid lab f- uh, with like five people working there. And at the end, she comes, of course, she kills everyone uh, because she's got unlimited power. <laughs> including her dad, which all of these things you'd think, oh, wow, there have to be some real emotion that you feel. You know, you'd have to feel something when you... No, I didn't feel a single damn thing. All I could think of was, let's get this movie over with. That's what I felt. Uh, but then the, the the other bad guy, the Rain, Rain, Rain Man, uh, Rain Man escapes and... He starts killing all the bad laboratory guys, and then he basically surrenders to uh, young Dark Phoenix, and she spares him, and he basically he turns good, and so his arc in the movie is that he turns good, which I actually like that idea more than the idea in in the book where he just stays evil. And it's just a part of this evil government conspiracy. So I will give them props for that. That's the reason why I put this movie as the fifth worst or fourth worst movie of the year. And not the first worst. Okay, it is better than The King's Daughter, The Requin, and X. It's better than those three, but that's not saying much. Because then, you know, uh, Rain Man, he takes over as her father. And I thought that that's a that's kind of a, a cool idea. Like I like that at the end, and uh, that to me that felt like oh was that in the book? Like because that felt like the most uh, interesting element of the whole story was the fact that uh, this character who could have been a villain, you know, he ends up becoming good at the end and changing as a person and. Uh, you know, helping her after she's lost her whole family. Uh, apparently in the book, I, I guess it's different, and there's some weird things with that. So I like that. That was the only thing that I liked, but it still did not make up for the rest of this terrible, terrible movie. So anyways, <laughs> I, I really didn't like this movie, honestly. Like, I also looked at Stephen King movies, and, you know, I ranked all those. This is like the fourth or fifth worst in that list, too. So that's how bad this movie is. I would not recommend it at all. Uh, don't waste your money. Don't waste your time. You know, just w- just watch the original, I guess. You know, maybe the original's good. Uh, read the book. You know, tell me how the book is. Uh, you know, don't watch this, okay? Because it's it's another... Blumhouse horror movie. So please like, comment, tell me what you thought of Firestarter, and then please subscribe to our channel for all the pain and suffering that I go through on a daily basis 
for your entertainment value. Goodbye, everybody. See you soon.